Hi, I'm Parker Dahl. And I'm Warren Eikoff. And welcome to So What? A place where we ask the question that's on the mind of many of our students, so what? Why do I need to learn about Napoleon? Everyone knows he was short. What else is there? You're calling someone else short? Oh, stop it. We get it, Eikoff. Everyone is short compared to me, because I'm a giant cotton-headed ninny-muggins. Sorry, what was that? I couldn't hear you because you're so close to the ground. <laughs> the following are but some of the answers to these questions, and as always, you should do your own research. Today, we will talk about the late stages of the French Revolution. Specifically, the rise of Napoleon Bonaparte. The first thing we need to acknowledge is that the French Revolution sought to overthrow an absolute monarch. Which they were very successful at doing. In fact, they tried to continue overthrowing the powerful elites and executed thousands of them in front of roaring crowds. Things get a little out of control during the Reign of Terror. But in 1794, the leader of this movement, the head of the Committee of Public Safety, Maximilien Robespierre, was put to death with the very guillotine that he used to scare people into giving him power. After this chaos came the Directory, a government that was again controlled by the bourgeoisie. The bourgeois was that? The bourgeoisie, those members of French society that were not noble but controlled most of the wealth. Uh, what? Rich people who aren't the king? Got it. Well, this would actually lead to a rise in corruption. Most of Europe was at war with France because all of those European monarchs, they wanted to suppress the idea of revolution. In fact, they were so scared of the concept of revolution that they were treating it like the plague. For if even one of their like crazed citizens started calling for things like freedom, then other people might listen to that and think that they deserve freedom too. The problem with the directory, they were not managing this fight very well. They kept losing and the people were worried. They had an all-star player though. Napoleon Bonaparte was winning wars all over Europe. And not only did he win, but he made sure that the general public knew what an all-star he really was and who they should be thankful for for all of their success. This will give Napoleon ground to stand on when he stages his coup d'etat. A coup de ville? Pretty sure he didn't have a car. No, no. Coup d'etat. Oh, I get it. It's a fancy place where you keep chickens. Not a chicken coop. It's a coup d'etat. It's French, and it means to take over a country, and it's usually pretty violent. Man, whatever happened to you? So what if people want to speak French? The French language is not what we're teaching here. You just need to listen. Nah, you need to mellow, my man. Just let people live their lives. There's no need to cause a fuss about this whole coup thing. No need to fuss? Well, then what should we do instead? Just eat, pray, love, my friend. What? Man, what does that even mean? I don't know. You want to play hacky sack? Okay, well this could be a wonderful opportunity to expand our friend's worldview a little bit. Let's just go back and ask Napoleon about his intentions. <laughs> uh, let's, let's try that again. It, it appears like someone has tampered with our time travel device. I mean, someone must seriously not want us to talk to Napoleon or find out what his intentions really were. So what do we do? I mean, we could play hacky sack. No. He seems nice, and like, I'm really good at kicking things. Doll! Right. Well, we could actually analyze the ways in which coups have impacted our world today. Coups can be found all throughout history, but modern countries have decided to make rules against them. They say there is a legitimate way to overturn a government, and illegitimate ways as well. How can you legitimately overthrow a government? Good question. Voting. If people are allowed to vote and express their opinions, then that is seen as a legitimate overthrow or support of the government. Interesting. Interesting. What is an illegitimate way to overthrow a government? Uh, I don't know. Having a military capture the country's leader, executing them in the street, then declaring a state of lawlessness and military control of the government until law has been reestablished but never actually relinquishing power, creating a military dictatorship. <laughs> that would be crazy, but I mean... Surely that, that hasn't ever actually happened, right? It has? Whoa, the world has a lot going on. Like the Spanish coup of July 1936, nationalists seized control of parts of Spain, commencing the Spanish Civil War. Later, General Francisco Franco assumed control of the country as dictator. This will become a major event in the development of World War II. Today, many countries will not recognize governments that are the result of a coup. 
the United States being one of them, stating that they will not support the rise of a dictator or the devaluing of the democratic process. Which is super ironic, considering how many coups the United States influenced during the Cold War. In 1949, Albania was in chaos following World War II. After Yugoslavia dropped out of the East Bloc, the small country of Albania was geographically isolated from the East Bloc. The US and UK took advantage of this situation and recruited anti-communist Albanians who had fled after the USSR had invaded. The US and UK formed the Free Albania Committee. In 1973, Chile's armed forces staged a coup d'etat against the government of President Salvador Allende, the first democratically elected Marxist leader in Latin America. The United States, however, and its CIA had a plan in place for three years to help support a coup against Allende because they thought he was a threat to democracy. But ironically, a brutal dictator, Augusto Pinochet, would step in and rule Chile with an iron fist for the next 17 years. Ugh. After Fidel Castro had risen to power in Cuba, he sought to ally with the Soviet Union. Cuban exiles who had traveled to the U.S., formed a counter-revolutionary military unit with the sole purpose of overthrowing Castro's regime, which was becoming more and more communist. The CIA actually funded this brigade and included military personnel with them, going so far as to train them in Guatemala. They launched an offensive at the Bay of Pigs, where they overwhelmed a small revolutionary unit. As the invaders lost their strategic initiative, the international community found out about this invasion, and U.S. President John F. Kennedy decided to withhold further air support from the operation. This attempted coup would surrender after three days and further entrench Castro as the leader of Cuba. These are by no means the only instances of U.S. funding and involvement in deciding the leadership of other countries. We will talk about the tendency for the U.S. to fund strongman governments to fight communism later. In fact, people during the time didn't even call these coups. They referred to them as regime changes, which were a necessary evil to fight against communism. In fact, most coups are going to think of themselves as a necessary evil to fight against a greater villain. This is the lesson that we'll learn from Napoleon Bonaparte. This is a figure that will see himself as walking in the footsteps of Alexander the Great, hero of the people. While he may see himself as a hero, others see him as a villain. Because honestly, we are all heroes of our own story. Most countries have realized the danger of entrusting a single individual with too much power and actively work against supporting coups. That work isn't done, however. For so long as power exists, there will be those who attempt to abuse it. How can you ensure that the discussion continues? Have a great day. Whoa, I didn't realize people could be so not chill. I say we rise up and show them we won't follow them. Who's with me? No, no. Revolutions were last week. Try again. Oh, right. Then how about we work within our government to make sure it protects the people and the ideals we support? Maybe also working with other countries to that same end. Yeah. Now, if only I could figure out what is happening with this. Maybe, maybe this wire is not connected. Ow! Can't feel my hand.